I guess you all know that, um, that uh, John Lennon, uh, together with the three other fellows uh, named uh, McCartney and Harrison and Starr, uh, were responsible for becoming, uh, I guess, the most written about, most listened to, most imitated uh, musical group uh, of the 60s. And for about eight years, uh, they were leaders in the musical world. And not only that, but it probably affected what um, a decade of young people uh, looked like and thought about and dreamed of. And uh, they achieved the absolute pinnacles of success. They were even honored by the Queen, an honor which they eventually uh, returned, I believe. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't uh, come as a surprise to anyone that the Beatles are no longer together. Um, in, in recent months, John Lennon and uh, has, well, John has sort of surfaced in the underground press where he gave a long interview in Rolling Stone magazine, in which he talked with some, a great deal of candor and uh, some uh, bitterness, I suppose, about the old days. And his wife, Yoko Ono, is maybe uh, uh, one of the most controversial ladies since the Duchess of Windsor, uh, Wally Simpson. Uh, kept the uh, Duke from becoming the king. Uh, tonight they are, however, quite above ground, and I'm very pleased to welcome them here. Will you welcome, please, John Ono Lennon and Yoko Ono Lennon. <laughs> How are you? Uh, nervous, but okay, thank you. Are you really? Yes. Are now, you? Is that a, a little bit, yeah. but uh, it isn't as if we've never met, because we, we did meet once. We did meet in yeah. the dingy hotel room. Right. <laughs> so you're Jack Lemmon. Yes. <laughs> and you're oh, Fred Astaire. Yeah. <laughs> or is it Orson Welles? I'm not Fred Astaire. <laughs> Yoko, how are you? Fine, thank you. Good, good, okay. Um, is there anything that you want to know about me to start off with that we could <laughs> just to sort of what, get what the, do you do for to, a living? to get the <laughs> uh, actually this is my profession Aren't I know you I lived here yeah I, I practically do I hardly ever get out of here the chair collapses into a bed and uh, it must I, be hard a, Yoko sat in that very chair oh. <laughs> Well, I bet many people have sat in it. Well, a lot show. of people have sat in it, but I was just I thinking... saw the show. It was very nice. Very but did nice. you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Did there was one thing they forgot to plug, so I thought I'd... <laughs> so I thought I'd plug it for them, and that's their new Christmas record. We wish you Merry Christmas. War is over. Get yours now. Thank you. Is there such a record? Yes, he made yeah. it after he was on the show, so he didn't get a chance to talk about it. Oh. Is there a slight undercurrent of hostility between you and, uh, no, no, and other members? No, really. no, you can John, tell me. I, mean, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to tell anybody. No, I, I just thought I'd take the opportunity and promote his record for him. Mm -hmm. War is over if you want it. Happy Christmas. Yeah. And Apple Records. Well, are, are you in any sense in contact with each other? Um, I mean, yeah, I saw him last night, actually, at the premiere of Raga. Which what? is what we should talk about, maybe. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, what did you say? Did I said, uh, hi, hello. Yeah. Do you have said, writers who think of these things, or yeah, do you just yeah. have them ready and you can just yeah. snap them right out yeah. like that? We have writers home, and, and rooms what, full of them. <laughs> what did he come back with right away? With, hi. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that for a second, because which, which, you, you know, Yoko, you've even been what? you've even been called the Dragon Lady, who um, yes, the, yes. the lady who brought the Beatles apart and or took them all. Well, apart. Took I them have trouble apart. with English. Can so we I'm please gonna... give her the credit for all the nice music that George made and Ringo made and Paul made and I've made since they broke up? <laughs> if she ble if she did it. That's true. Uh, now, uh, it turned out all right, didn't it? You turned, yeah. So but anyway, you were no, aware of that. I mean, that the press no. saw, oh, always yes, saw yes. you as the, the wedge that was driven in. Uh, the wedge. I don't know how you can drive a wedge in three places or whatever, how many spaces there are between four people. But, um, uh, but that, well, that yeah. was the. How, there are millions of girls who would love to have met, let alone married, uh, one of the four, any one of the four, probably, but certainly a lot of them. <laughs> well, are, I resent to, you know, to, to think of him as. Just one of the four, you know. Yeah. I mean, or any one of the four, etc. Because 
I just met him as another artist in old band, and I didn't, you know, particularly realize that part of it, really. You were a Beatles fan or, uh, before, or would you say you were a Lennon fan before? Uh, neither. Neither? I <laughs> didn't care for she either didn't really of them? She didn't know about us. No, the only I mean, name she knew was Ringo, because it means apple in Japanese mm. and so Ringo means apple. Ringo means apple. Yeah. Did you know so, that when you named your company Apple? No, no. Oh. It was just one of those happy accidents. Just one of those happy mm. apples, yes. <laughs> Happy applesauce, mm, right. right number of syllables. Christmas. Ringo, if you spell it sideways, spells groin. Yes. <laughs> Star backwards is rats. I know, and it, there are a lot of, do you do those things too? I find I, that I'm When I go along the road in the car, oh. I'm always doing the signpost backwards. Anyway, she didn't split the Beatles, because right. uh, how could uh, one girl split the Beatles, or one woman, you know? The Beatles were drifting apart on their own, you know? Do, do, can you remember when you realized that it was inevitable that you would split up? Uh, I wouldn't, no. First, no. It's like anyone? saying, you know, yeah. did you remember falling in love? Not quite, yeah. no. It just sort of happens. How long was it fun? Yeah, well, everything's fun off and on, you know. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it could have gone on being fun off and on, or it could have gone worse, I don't know. It's just that when you grow up, you know, we don't want to be the crazy gang, which they might know over here, which is British, or the Marx Brothers, which is sort of being dragged on stage playing She Loves You when we've got you know, asthma and tuberculosis and when we're 50, you know. Here they are again, yesterday, oh my God. <laughs> so I, I, a long time ago I said that uh, I didn't want to be singing She Loves You When I'm 30. I said that when I was about 25 or something, which in a roundabout way meant that I wouldn't be doing whatever I was doing then, mm -hmm. you know, at 30. Well, I was 30 last October and uh, that's about when uh, my life changed, really. And especially for John, I can say that he's at least sort of overgrown, outgrown, you know, whatever they were in, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I think it's very difficult for four artists who are so brilliant and talented to be together and do everything together, you know. I mean, just impossible almost. So whatever they were doing was almost miraculous, you know, that they were together. When you... Uh if you and, you and John and Yoko do meet, though, you're not really no, no. gritting your teeth. No, no, we're good friends. Yeah. Well, all of that about her being the problem with the group, is that slightly silly that, that one woman could be so much of a problem? No, the group had problems long before Yoko came along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many problems, so it's... Can you remember who was the first to say, you know, I bet we'll break up one day, um, that this won't go on, that this is sort of a dream that we can't all stick no. together? No. Uh, I don't really remember anything about the Beatle days. Uh, it seems like a sort of, you know, previous incarnation when I think about it. And a long time ago, like yeah. another life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you regret any of it? No, no. Don't regret really anything, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happened and it was good, you know, it was good, but it was also good to carry on, do something else. In fact, it was a relief. <laughs> Sometimes they say you were... I mean, some you people were... can't understand that, you know, because Beatles was such a big deal. They can't understand why yeah. we should uh, actually enjoy splitting up. But there's a time, you know, there's a time when people grow up and they leave home or whatever they do, and they go for a change, you know, and it was really time for a change. Don't you think a lot of people just envied the idea of being world celebrities, though? And being well, some a... people, you know, would go on and on forever, singing the same tune and playing the same gig if they were making some money, you know? Yeah. But uh, I think we'd all rather give that up and try going on our own and try doing something we really want to do. Yeah. And if we don't make it, then hard luck. But uh, as it happens, we've all got such a lot of, like, goodwill hanging over from being Beatles. Yeah. I mean, you probably wouldn't have me on the show if I hadn't have been one. <laughs> Let's face it. No, you wouldn't get here on looks alone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, we will return after they, this message. Oh, now wait a minute! Station. <laughs> Just because that comes on doesn't mean you have to do it right away. Oh. Do you feel like doing it now? I just did it. Oh. Right. Oh, I see. Four or five minutes. We will. <laughs> Four and five. He's right, folks. We will return after this message from our local station. See when you say it. The uh, talking with George Harrison, who wants to know if it's over yet. <laughs> uh, the, do you think you might have been the most anxious of the four to get out? I get that impression from reading about it. Uh, maybe, about maybe, yeah. yeah. I wonder it was why. Very, well, because um, 
over the uh, years, you know, I had such a lot of songs mounting up that I really wanted to do, but I only got my quota of one or two tunes per album. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way I would have had to have recorded about a hundred Beatle albums just to get out the tunes I had in 1965. Were you held down by the other fellas? Uh, well, very subtly, yes. Yeah? How but would they not do really, it? I mean, they just... didn't strap me down or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, no, it was just the way things happened, you know. They, it started off I didn't write, they wrote, then I started to write, and mm -hmm. it was uh, sort of trying to push in a bit. You don't, you don't actually read or write music, do you? No. Well, then how, when you say write... Well, write. If you have a tune that hits you, uh, how do you get it down? Just keep it in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. Just work it out on the piano or on the guitar. But then do you tape it, or what preserves sometimes, it? Sometimes, sometimes, mm -hmm. put it on tape. But usually you can remember it in your head if you don't. I, mean, I write the words down and remember the tune in my head. Yeah. Do you wish you'd studied composition and no. all of that? You don't need it. Well, I, maybe, uh, maybe it would help somewhere. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have to uh, pay a copyist. Yeah. But you don't miss it. I mean, you can... No, no. It's, it would just help. Maybe because it's not really so. sort of music, you know. Yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, there's a difference between people who write music and classical things and big arrangements to the sort of thing I do. It's just really it's very simple. Mm -hmm. And the other, the other guys, most of the melodies were, were John's or Paul's that were done, um, yeah. uh, done on the album. Um, that was funny when John was on. Every time you had a commercial break and then came back part 20 and they keep playing Paul's songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, Just put our guests at ease, I guess, yeah. is what, what we do. Uh, but they, they always talk about you as the real musician of the group, and if you haven't yeah. studied music, do, what do they mean by that? Do, that you're more serious about music? You've seen that, know. though, haven't you? That they it's say. probably because I didn't smile so much. <laughs> <laughs> to be a real musician, you have to be sour, I suppose. Yeah. It's kind of, there was also the theory that you attracted more girls by being the quiet one, in the same sense that a guy at a party who sits in the corner uh, will have the girl come over and say, oh, what's the matter? It's you just know, uh, This was not a calculated dirty rumor. philosophy on your part. Was it? Just a rumor, yeah. Yeah. I think Paul used to get them all with his, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, we don't have much time left. If, if any, does anyone have any idea how much time we do have? Let me confirm quickly a couple rumors with you. Yes. One of them, has it ever been settled whether Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was a code for anything? It never was, and nobody believes me. I even saw uh, some famous star introducing, I've forgotten who it was, introducing a Lennon McCartney show, and uh, it was Mel Torme mm. saying about how Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was about LSD. This is the truth. My son came home with a drawing and said, showed me this strange looking woman flying around. I said, what is it? He said, it's Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And I thought, that's beautiful. I immediately wrote a song about it. Uh -huh. The song had gone out, the whole album had been published, and somebody noticed that, that the letters spelt out LSD. And I had no idea about it. And of course, after that, I was checking all the songs to see what the, the letters spelt out. Yeah. They didn't spell out anything, none of the others. And, uh, it wasn't about that at all, you know. They could do that. Eleanor Rigby But nobody was, believes, uh, you see. Yeah. Stood for there was Henry the Horse in a song I wrote called Mr. Kite. The, the lyrics, which I got most of it off, was an old poster for an old-fashioned circus, you know, from the 1800s. And it was all about Pablo Fanky's fair and the horse uh -huh. was there. And they said Henry the Horse was horse, which I didn't know anything about happiness then, you know. Is the warm gun. And Happiness is a Warm Gun was another one, they said, which was banned on the radio. They said it was about shooting up uh, drugs. <clears throat> And it was, the, it was the front of a gun magazine which said, happiness is a warm gun. You know, they're advertising guns. I thought it was so crazy that I made a song out of it. Do you ever think of anything, uh, I don't know if you knew Janis Joplin well or Jimi Hendrix we, we didn't or all, meet, but, but she sent me a birthday tape on my birthday. Our yeah. Last birthday, Yoko asked all different people to make a tape for me, and she was one of them. And we got it. After she died, it arrived in the post mm. that she was singing happy birthday to me in the studio. What do you think could be done about drug overdosing in well, or out of the profession of I music? I think the, the basic thing nobody asked is why do people take drugs of any sort from alcohol to aspros to hard drugs and that question has to be resolved first before you think well what can we do for the poor drug addict yeah. why do we and you and anybody have to have these accessories to normal living mm -hmm. to live that means there's something wrong with society that's making us so pressurized that we cannot live in it without 
guarding ourselves against it. Mm. So it's that basic, the more problem. Communication. I think if people are allowed to be a bit more free and express mm. themselves, they wouldn't have to inhibit themselves by taking drugs to not be hurt. People take drugs and drink so they don't feel what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. Total freedom for everybody is our goal, you know. That way, you know, it will be a utopia. People yes, are frightened of freedom. It. They think yeah. freedom, oh, there'll be excesses. Of course, there would be excess to an extent, and then it would settle down. Yes. The way the, the porno films don't pull so many people in now. So what? It, it'll, it'll level out. Mm -hmm. And uh, all forms of freedom will be the same as that. If people are allowed to be completely free, it will le level out, and people would be less inhibited and not be frightened of each other and wouldn't have to take drugs to prevent being hurt by each other. Mm -hmm.